Starn Stripe unveils her ultimate move, the new Shigaraki's here, and Japan is about to be nuked? Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 331 is finally out, and with it we see the epic continuation of the dramatic clash between America's number one hero and Japan's luxuriously long-haired symbol of fear. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide on into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, we saw America's best girl and all might wannabe, Star and Stripe, slide into Japan's airspace, slicker than Todoroki slid into half the fan hearts and face off against testicle faces disciple and new favorite toy Tomura Shigaraki. Within this fight we learn of Star's Omega super special awesome god to your quirk new order. An ability that allows her to set a new rule onto her surroundings allowing her to manipulate and bestow new properties onto herself and the world around her. We also learn that Star is actually the little girl All Might saved in his younger years at the start of the My Hero Academia 2 Heroes movie. Okay I know Horikoshi loves to bring back seemingly forgotten characters, but this one takes the cake for the most unexpected character return. No one saw this coming. As Testicle Boy Jr. and Murica are battling it out, with Shigaraki firing off huge blasts of energy at the Queen of Patriotism and getting straight to the point, and Star trapping Shiggy in an anti-atmosphere star and blasting him with a barrage of super powerful lasers, the two top dogs decide, nah, this shit's too fancy, let's just punch it out. And so they leapt at one another in a head-on collision where unfortunately for the Lord of Darkness and Face Cream, Murica got the upper hand, ultimately securing curing the W. USA, 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 USA. Having touched Tomura, Star was now capable of having her quirk directly affect him. So she decided to whip out her huge gohones and make it so that if Shigaraki moved another inch, he would die. That's right, this girl just death noted Shigaraki. However, in a twist of fate, we learn that All for One and Shigaraki's battle for control over the body of Tenko Shimura has caused the two personalities to merge together, creating an entirely new person. And as this new entity is formed, Star's attempt to murder the new King of Villainy fails, revealing one of her quirk's weaknesses, and the body of Tenko Shimura explodes into a ball of lightning. And this is where chapter 331 picks up. This chapter opens up exactly where the last chapter left off, with Star being thrown backwards by the impact of the explosion Shigaraki created at the end of the last chapter. As Star regains her composure, she notes how she is confused as to why Shigaraki's hair has suddenly grown long. Longer. Shigaraki, now standing atop one of the fighter jets, says he now has some understanding of how New Order works, exclaiming that although it is widely considered to be the strongest quirk in existence, it still has some limits. The first of which he noticed was Star's super strength, as if there was no limit to her strength, she would have been able to kill him instantly with one single punch. He also points out that she might as well have just said if Shigaraki touches the air in that certain area, he dies instantly. Since since this was not the case, he remarks that there has to be some limit to any kind of rule imposed. Shiggy then goes on to figure out that the limitation for using this quirk on living beings must be the name calling part, as her last order didn't work because she assumed he was Tomura Shigaraki, when in reality he's in an ambiguous state between Shigaraki, All for One, and Tenko Shimura. It's also interesting to note here that Shigaraki says the specifics of Star's quirk have been kept strictly confidential by the US government, and that the only information they can get on it was by watching her perform public hero work. Which does make a lot of sense when you think about it, and makes you wonder why Japan never tried to hide the details of their hero's abilities. Although I suppose it is pretty easy to identify super strength and fire control when you see them. Shiggy then ends this breakdown of New Order by shouting that he still has so many questions about the limitations of the quirk, and that he can't wait to take it and find it all out himself. Following Shiggy's breakdown, one of the fleet pilots asks Star once again what they are going to do since neither New Order nor the lasers worked. In this desperate situation, Star asks the pilot to send a message to Commander Akbar, which initially startles the pilot who asks if this is really the best thing to do. To which Star and Stripe responds that Tomura Shigaraki is no longer just an enemy of Japan. He is a threat on a 
a global scale, and they need to kill him right now. In hearing this, the pilot hits her with a yara yara daze as he remembers the first time he met Star, where she told him, from now on, I'm going to take care of all of you. Let's put our lives on the line together, brothers. And the pilot Star was talking to gives an order to the rest of the pilots to back off. And with this, the battle between Shigaraki and Star continues, as Star immediately creates a new order saying the atmosphere will be solidified into a shape that is 1000 times my size, which causes a huge star and stripe shaped aura to take form next to her. I mean, at this stage, she basically just created her own Jojo stand. Now, when Star does this, Shigaraki does make an interesting comment, as he mentions that he actually can't see this change in the atmosphere, which I guess makes sense. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. If there's any physics nerds out there who can explain if a solid atmosphere can be seen, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, with this new ginormous version of herself on the battlefield, Star uses her first official super move, Fist Bump to the Earth, in which the giant solidified atmospheric version of herself absolutely devastates Shigaraki with a single punch. Now, I'm not sure I made it clear, but when I say this version of Star is huge, I mean it is the fucking biggest thing I have ever seen in the My Hero world. It towers over everything. For context, this is the Atmosphere Star, and this teeny tiny little speck is Shigaraki and his no move. After hitting Shigi with this punch, Star admits that accumulating damage will not be enough to defeat Shigaraki since he can heal himself, and she won't be able to win as easily as she previously thought, as she has no idea what his new name is. So, she has no other option than to delay him until Captain Akbar gets back to her. At this point, Star then claps her hands and the aura does the same, creating a huge, almost earth-shattering impact, crushing Shigaraki in the process. With Shigaraki temporarily pinned down, Star surprisingly asks all of the pilots to shoot their lasers at her. And as they do so, without hesitation might I add, she uses her quirk to give another order, saying the lasers will solidify into a single beam. And with this, all of the lasers then all join into one huge beam right above Star's head. With the giant laser beam fully finished, Star releases Shigaraki from her grasp and immediately uses her atmosphere self to grab onto the laser with both hands. And she plunges it straight to towards Shigaraki. This technique is actually revealed to be another of Star's named super moves, which she calls Unified Laser with Max Output Keranos. Now, fun fact, Keranos is actually ancient Greek for the word lightning or thunderbolt. After this attack lands, the pilots begin to think that the fight is over, but Star clarifies that this blow is just to hold Shigaraki back, because if he could be defeated by an attack of this level, then Endeavor would have been able to finish him off back in the war, which just goes to show you just how powerful Endeavor actually is. Right after explaining this, Star receives a call from Commander Akbar, who is 100% a Star Wars reference. I mean, just look at this dude. On the phone call, Commander Akbar initially gives out to Star, saying her recklessness has crossed the line this time, and that the penalty will be even more severe than just a simple revocation of her hero license. But but Star says that she doesn't care about anything like that, and she just needs to know if he has finished the preparations. Akbar confirms he has by stating that Japan has been warned and it should be arriving soon. However, she only has one shot. And with this, Chapter 331 comes to an end, as Commander Akbar tells Star even All Might couldn't capture this villain. It's your time to surpass him. And we see this image of several missiles heading towards the area where the fight is taking place, which are called New Hypersonic Intercontinental Missiles Tiamat. Oh my god, it's Hiroshima all over again! Overall, this was an interesting yet kind of peculiar chapter. In the opening, there was a lot of exposition with Shigaraki trying to figure out Star's quirk, which is great and all, but what made it kind of confusing was Shigaraki was just making assumptions. Like, he 
admits he has no idea how exactly it works and he mainly just clarifies what we learned from the previous chapter. He did give us a bit more insight into Star's abilities, but I felt like it would have been a better show don't tell type of thing. Not much has happened with Shigaraki's new identity, but I feel like that that is something that will come up in the next chapter after Star shows off her ultimate move. Speaking of Star, holy crap is her power insane. I gotta give props to Horikoshi. New Order could be a very basic and straightforward power under the wrong hands, but he's being pretty creative with it so far. I mean, a giant solidified, invisible, atmospheric version of yourself wielding a giant staff made out of jet lasers is pretty damn unique if you ask me. I can't wait to see what's in store next chapter. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra!